Hey, Jason from Unity3D.College. Recently I did a video on opening a door in virtual reality where you could reach up, click the trigger, have the door automatically play an animation and open. And there were some questions about how you would set something up where you could actually just pull the handle, open it, and then start opening and closing the door with your hand instead of just playing an animation. So I wanted to show how that's done. It's not a whole lot harder. We're just kind of going to extend on the existing concepts, but I'm going to run through them all again in this video. So the first thing I did was grab this wooden door right here from Open Game Art. It was just a nice free download and it worked pretty well. It was a little bit weird. I had to make a little bit of adjustments in Unity to get the placement right, but it worked overall. And let me just start doing it and I'll kind of run you through the process. So the first thing I needed to do was just take my wooden square door and pull that into the scene. Here we go. So I've got the door and you can see that the uh, the child piece way down here is totally off. It's not anywhere near where it's supposed to be. So I just pulled it right off of the, the parent there. And then next thing I did was go to game object and hit center on children, just so that the center of the door is actually somewhere near where it's supposed to be instead of way off there. Now this is just an issue with the art asset. It could be fixed in Blender or something else, but it is simple enough to just fix it right here. And then I kind of repositioned it got it to about where it needs to be. I guess it's gonna be right about here. And then I created another child. So we're just gonna go create empty and we're gonna call this door. This is actually gonna be a parent now in just a second. So I pull the door out and then make the movable hinges wings thing into a child. And then what I wanted to do was just adjust the rotation here. So I'm gonna rotate this, I believe it's 90, there we go, yeah. 90 on the X and then I'm going to grab the parent again and just move that down so that it kind of lines up with the frame and the frames not important we're not actually doing anything with it it's just a piece there to kind of give us an idea of make sure that we're moving the right thing now this is close but we want to rotate the door on the hinges right so when I do the rotation I don't want it to go like this I want it to rotate from over there so I'm going to move this back out of the door and then I'm going to grab the door piece and just slide it over so that the position kind of lines up with the hinges so I'll get it close enough and then I'll move this right back up onto the door so now when I rotate the door it's gonna rotate like this there we go now we're a little bit closer to where we want to be but we can't do it in virtual reality yet so we need to start adding the circular drives but first let's get the player in there so if you have Steam VR imported I just imported Steam VR from the asset store which is right um, let's see where is that Steam VR right here so if you have this imported you'll have a prefab called player that's actually under I believe it's under the interaction system samples pre no where is it interaction system let's just search for it so just search for player there it is interaction system core prefabs player so we'll take the player drop it out onto the scene and then delete the main camera the player has a camera already in there we don't need a second camera now the position here may be a little bit off because my setup is a little bit offset from the center when I'm sitting down coding. So I'm just going to hit play and see where that door is relative to me. Pop on the headset. The door is way over there. It's relatively far. So I'm going to look right here and I can see where I am. Now I'm just going to grab the door and I want to move it over so that it's just kind of in a good spot where I can reach it from here without without getting up. Oh, it's almost there, it's just a little bit too close. So just move it a little tiny bit more and a little bit right there so I can reach out. Yeah, I'll be able to reach it right there. So I'm gonna copy the transform position here and stop playing, then I'll paste the transform position and I'm gonna move the wooden hinge or the frame over it so that it lines up pretty well. Again, it's not perfect. You'll probably want to spend a little bit of time in your level actually lining things up and getting them right. You also probably won't base it off of where you're sitting at the time. Okay, I'm going to save my scene. I'll just call this demo. And now it's time to start adding some circular drives. The first thing we want is a drive for the handle so that we can just turn the handle up and down. So I believe it's this piece called above, which is actually below because piece of art and art is always named wrong. So on here I'm just going to add a circular drive and I believe the default values of negative 45 and positive 45 for the angle 
were pretty good. So I'm going to leave those for the rotation angles, but I do want to check the limited checkbox right here. And now I need to assign a collider. So there's this child collider. I need to create one. We don't have a collider right now. I'm going to select the child right down here and I'm just going to make a mesh collider. Now I need to check the convex box. Now you see my mesh collider right there, the nice little green thing. And it works on both sides, so we could open this from either side. I'll go back up to the parent here, and then I'll assign the collider right there. Now if I save and hit play, I should be able to reach out and turn that knob. Although it's probably going to be in the wrong direction. Let's try it. Yep, there we go. I can turn it. It is rotating in the wrong direction though. So let's fix that. All we need to do is change the axis from X to Y. And if you want to see what that's doing, if I switch to the rotate tool, E to switch by the way, if I change here you see that the Y rotation is now changing. That's what I want it to do. I don't want it rotating on the X. So let's play one more time and see that. There we go. So I can grab it, I can rotate it up, rotate it down. Perfect. Well, almost perfect. See how I'm rotating that base piece? That's not really what I want to do. The problem here is that I have this circular drive on the wrong object. I really want it on this knob right here. So let's remove it. Just right click and remove. And then I need to remove the interactable. And we'll go down to the knob piece here and just add the circular drive again. And since the settings were so simple, uh, it's easier to just drop it right back on, recreate it. So there we go. I'll drop the collider, which is on the same object. It would actually automatically find that, but I prefer to just, autom just set it up in advance. Okay, so we're almost done. We still need to make it so that our door can actually open, though. So to open our door, we're going to need a circular drive that rotates this piece right here. So we'll add another circular drive component. And then for the collider, we're going to create a new one. So I'm going to go down to maybe here, right onto this piece, and I'm going to add a sphere collider. Now let's take a look at this collider. The collider is relatively big. No, it's kind of small, actually. It needs to be relatively big, so let's just crank up the radius. I want to make it easy to grab so that it's not, you know, I want it, it should be pretty simple for the player once they've opened it to just pull the door. I don't want them to be exactly right on the piece every time. So there we go, we've got the collider added. And now I'm going to go back to the circular drive and just assign that collider as the child collider. And we need to set a minimum and a maximum angle. For this, I want to go to ni negative 90 and 90. And I want to check the limited box just so that we can limit it and they can't wrap the door all the way around infinitely. Um, one other thing that I want to do though is I don't want this, well here, let's play, let's see what it does and then I'll show you what we'll do next. So here we go, we play, we reach up, we grab the door, okay, well it's, it's rotating. Again, it's on the wrong axis. So we'll need to fix that, but also we don't have to turn the handle yet. So let's fix both of those things. So we'll select the door, We'll change the axis. I believe it's going to be Y. Let's double check that. We can just rotate right here. Yep, it's Y. So it needs to be on the Y axis. And to force the player to actually open the door, what I'm going to do is select the above piece right here where the sphere collider is that opens the door that slides it back and forth. And I'm just going to uncheck it and disable it. So that collider is not on. You can't just turn the door by default. I am going to allow you to turn the door though once this knob has finished turning. So to do that, we have two events here. We have on min angle and on max angle. I'll just hit plus, add a new event for it. And I'm going to drag in this parent here. And I'll find the sphere collider. And we'll just set enabled to true. So now we're turning on the sphere collider once we reach the minimum or maximum angle. And then I'm going to do it again. and Or sorry, hit add again. And I'm going to take the existing knob piece and I'm going to turn this collider off. So I'll go down here and find the mesh collider, enabled, and set that to false. So now once I've opened it, I can't just grab the handle and turn it up and down again. I can just open and close the door. You may want to do something slightly different, but this is an easy implementation that you could always extend later. So here we go. I'm going to repeat that for max, so that way I can raise it all the way or lower it all the way to toggle it. So I'm going to turn on the sphere collider again, and then I want to... Oh, Let's click here, add another one. I want to turn off this mesh collider on the child. There we go. Enabled, set to false, and save. Now if I play, I should be able to turn the handle and then open the door. And I can't open the door before, so let's test that. So I reach up here, nothing. Can't just open the door. I can grab here, twist. Oh, 
There we go. I'm twisting. It's not quite working. What's wrong? Let's take a quick look. Okay, so if you look at the above knob, you'll see that limited is not checked. We need that checked to limit the rotation and then force these events to fire. So I've checked it, saved again. Let's try one more time. There we go. Turn the knob, it's locked, and I can open the door. I can push it either way. If we wanted to change that rotation or change it so that it was only one way door, we could just adjust that on this door right here, just set the minimum angle. So for instance, if we only wanted it to push in, I could stop, set this to zero, save again, and now it won't let me pull because the minimum angle is zero. So here we go, I can twist it, I can push, I can't pull it past here though. This is as far as it'll go. So it just only opens one way. So there you go, I hope that's helpful. If you have more questions about this and just kinda wanna build your own door system, let me know, drop me a question or a comment in the description or the comments below or shoot me an email on my site at unity3d.college. And if you like this video, don't forget to just hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.